Okay, so today we're going to learn how to make Pong. Uh, we're going to start off by deleting the cat and creating a new sprite. And uh, we're going to start off by drawing the panels. So I'm going to draw a black rectangle. Uh, it's going to be tall but skinny. And I'll say OK. And there's my first panel. That's uh, what each player uses to bounce the ball. Uh, now one cool thing about Scratch is all we have to do is make one panel that works really well. And then we can copy it. And, uh, and just modify it slightly. So um, we want to uh, have it event driven. We want it to move up and down with the up and down arrows. So I'm going to go into controls and say when up arrow is pressed. Uh, let's see, let's have it move by 10. No, that's moving it left and right, so that's wrong. What I want to do is, just like in math, I want to move it up and down the y-axis. So what I want to do is say change y by, and 10 is probably good. So yeah, that works. So let's make the down arrow work. So when the down arrow is pressed, I want it to move down the y-axis, which is the same thing as moving it at negative number. So I'll just change the 10 to a negative 10. So now our panel will move up and down. The next thing we want to do is uh, make it so that it doesn't go through the bottom and top. So you can see right now it'll just continue off the page. We don't want that. So I'm just going to throw a little if on edge bounce in there. And so it'll never let it go through uh, the top or bottom. OK, next uh, we want our panels to start off in a specific location. Um, and the flag, the green flag, whenever it's pushed means that we're starting off the game or we're starting the program. So let's have it move to a specific X, Y position when the game starts. So you can see if I, um, I have when the flag is pressed, go to, and then I have an X and a Y value. So it'll always go to that spot when it starts. So this is perfect. Uh, a perfect panel. Everything works well. I'm going to name it. Um, let's call it panel two because it's on the right hand side. That's usually where player two would be. And then all we need to do is duplicate it and, and then modify it. So we have our second player one panel. So we'll call this one panel one. And I'll move it to the left side of the screen. That's where player one should be. And then I'm going to have to change a few things in the, in the script now to make it work. So let's start off by putting these numbers to negatives. And that should basically start it at the opposite um, side to the other one. Uh, now, of course, we can't have them both up and down arrows. So on the left side, we're going to use W for up and S for down, which are some standard keys in a lot of video games for up and down. So let's see. Does it work? Yep. Our panels both move up and down. Perfect. That's great. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the ball. So I'm going to draw a red circle. And uh, it should be pretty small. You can run into a few problems if you make it too big. So I'll push OK. There's the ball. And uh, one thing you should check uh, before you start programming is go back in and edit the script. And uh, there's a button there at the bottom left to set the center. Just make sure that the crosshairs go through the middle of the ball, or you might run into some problems later. OK, so we are going to start creating the script. So we want, uh, when we start the game, we want the ball to start moving. So I'm going to use a forever loop and have it forever move 10 steps. Actually, let's make it 5. 10 might be too big. It might not work properly. So forever move 5 steps. Let's see. Boom. OK, not very interesting. Flies off to the right and in a straight line. Usually in Pong, the, uh, there we go. We should start it at 0, 0 so that it always starts in the middle. And uh, probably what we want is to have it um, point in a diagonal direction to start off with instead of um, a straight line. That's a boring game of Pong. So let's try minus 45. See what happens there. There we go. Looks a bit better. But you notice it didn't bounce off the wall. So we're just going to throw in if on edge bounce in there. And let's see what it does now. 
Okay, so it's behaving more like an actual Pong game, which is great. Uh, so what else do we need? We are going to say uh, if it runs into one of the panels, we want it to bounce. So let's say if it's touching the color black, because that's the color of the panel, uh, then we're going to want it to bounce. But there is no bounce operator, so we're just going to have it rotate by 90 degrees. So if it's touching the black panel, rotate by 90 degrees, and it'll bounce off the panel. Let's see. Boing. Will it work? Yes, it works. Perfect. Okay, so it's bouncing off the panels, and it's bouncing off all of the walls, which is great. Next, we want to track points. So um, when the ball goes off the left side, the person on the right should get a point, and on and the opposite is true. So we're going to create two variables, player one points and player two points. So I've just gone to the variable section and make I've pushed the make a variable button. I'm calling it player one points, player two points. I'll put player one points on the left and player two points on the right. And so what we want is uh, we're going to use colors and color sensing here. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll draw a green uh, wall on the left hand side and that the ball will know if it touches the green that it goes that that uh, player one gets a point. And I'm going to put an orange on the other side and blue at the top. Okay, blue at the top is just so that I can put the points up there at the top. Uh, and so we'll have to make the ball bounce off the blue as well. Okay, so let's get it started. You'll know the ball bounces through the green and through the blue. We want it bouncing off the blue. So I go back into my ball script, and we're going to add. Um, that if it's touching the color green or the color blue or the color orange, it's going to do something. So let's start with the color blue. So if touching color blue, we want it to basically do the same thing it does when it hits the panel. We want it to turn 90 degrees. So let's throw that in there. Turn 90 degrees. And let's see, does it work? Let's test it out. And it flakes out a bit there, but let's... Uh, I think that's because the ball is too big. Uh, I've seen this happen before. Uh, let's just make the ball a bit smaller. Does it still, yeah, it still flakes out. So we're going to go into the ball, and we're going to hit costumes, and we're going to hit edit. And up at the top, there's just that little button that makes it smaller. Let's just push it once and say OK, and see if it works now. It does. OK, so great. The ball was a little too big. So if this happens to you, you can just make your ball a bit smaller. Look, it bounces off the panels. It bounces off the blue. but you'll notice nothing happened when it hit the green. So that's the next thing. We need to start counting points when it hits the green or the yellow. So we're going to say if touching the color green, so I throw that in there and I use the dropper to select the color green, um, I want what, uh, to change player two's points by one. So that means basically I want to increase player two's points by one when it touches the green. And you'll notice we just got a bazillion points there. So player two, and that's because we didn't tell the script to stop. So the ball just kept on moving in the green. So the person kept getting points. So now we've thrown in a, a stop script there. So when it hits the green next time, it'll stop and the person will get one point. We can duplicate that whole block now and, and just choose um, the color orange. There we go. So if touching the color orange, player one gets a point. And then the script stops. So there you see uh, player two got another point, but only one point, and then it stopped. Just like that. One point, and it stops. One point, and it stops. Excellent. So that works. It's counting points. But you'll notice that um, when I start the game, player two already has a bazillion points, so we need to uh, make it so that the person starts at only one point. Okay, the last thing we want to do here is make it so that uh, the game goes to five points and then ends. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by waiting one second after the ball hits the wall, and we're going to get rid of the stop script thing because we don't actually want it to stop. What we want it to do is we want the ball to go back to the middle and, uh, and for it to keep playing. Uh, right now we have ev all of everything wrapped in a forever loop, and that's great, except for we only want it to go to five points. 
So what we're going to do instead is uh, create a repeat until loop, and we want it to repeat until um, either player one or player two has five points. So basically, I'm setting up a few operators here. So we'll say player one equals five, or player two equals five. So if either of those things happen, then the loop will stop repeating. It will only repeat until either of those things are true. So I just pick up the rest of that block and throw it in there. And I can throw away the forever loop. I don't need that anymore. Throw it in. Now it'll only go to five points. But as you can see, um, I, my ball every second keeps jumping. So what I need to do is have it uh, move back to zero, 0, before it starts playing again. So I'll just throw that in. Uh, so if touching color green, give a point, wait a second, and then move the ball back to zero, 0, And of course, I need to do that for if it's touching the orange zone as well. So if it's touching orange, player 1 gets a point, wait one second, and move the ball back to zero, 0. So let's see, does it work now? Yes. And it works on the green side and the orange side. So players are getting points. It's working perfectly. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is end the game off. Uh, we're going to check to see which player won and announce that. So after the repeat until loop runs, we'll, have, we'll check to see if player one has five points, which would mean that they won. Um, then we'll uh, say, we'll have the ball say that player one wins. And then below that it just says else. So if player one doesn't win, we don't have to check to see if player two wins. We know player two wins. So if player one has five points, player one wins. And otherwise, player two must have won. So we just throw in a player two wins. And that's it. That's the game.